Okay, so we're on question 10. And what that means is uh, we are now looking at the sketching of the trigonometric functions that we've been talking about so far. So I've already introduced you to the basic graphs of the sine and the cosine, which I will do again here. So I said the sine starts from 0, like that. Okay, so this is at 0. The angle there becomes uh, pi over 2. And then, of course, there it's uh, pi. There it's 3 pi over 2, which is like 217 degrees. And then finally, we have 3 squares, which is like 2 pi in radians. And then the amplitude for the normal sine graph is 1. Okay, negative 1 on the bottom. So this is for the sine of x. Okay. Now, one thing that I want you to understand is uh, the general form of uh, a graph is uh, a sine, um, you can have b attached to x, and then you can have plus, plus, let's say c, and then you can put some of this in the in the brackets and then let's say plus d okay so i want you to understand exactly what these are looking at the way that i've put them okay so you've seen that there is a coefficient of sine all right so in this case where we just have that graph sine of x the coefficient is a one <coughs> now that one represents the amplitude or how high the graph is going to be going so if we add the two there if we add the 2 there, it would mean that instead of us having amplitude of a 1 and the minimum value of a negative 1, we would have a 2 instead and a negative 2. So what you're saying that is the value of A determines how high the graph gets to stretch. That is, that's in terms of uh, the amplitude, right? <coughs> now, the value D is also very interesting. The value D is also very interesting. That would mean that if we add, sometimes it's usually like 4 minus or just plus or a minus. But the point that I'm trying to make is this is not attached to the sign. It is just an additional subtraction to the entire graph. So that value is called the vertical shift. The vertical shift. So whatever value you get to have becomes the zero line. What do I mean by that? <coughs> so what that means is if you had to have a graph, of course, not forgetting that we've got a zero line there. So if this is a normal zero line, now if you get to have, we take it, we have sine of x, and then we have, or maybe I can put it this way, can have 2 plus sine of x. So what does that mean? So we'll take this 2 to be a 0 line. Okay. So meaning that we need to determine where 2 is going to be. So if we've got a 0 there, then 2 is supposed to be somewhere on top there. <laughs> so that will be our new 0 line. So don't forget to say 2. Now, remember we said... The coefficient of the sine graph is, I'll put a 2, well, let me put a 3 so that we are able to distinguish. So that is the amplitude, how high the graph is going to go. Now if we are taking the vertical shift to be the new zero line, it means that we are going to go up from the new zero line 3 times, so which now will tell us that the graph is going to go as high as up to 5, but of course we can actually sketch the graph. Knowing that this is a positive sign, it's going to start from a zero line. So it will start from there, go up, come down, again, get back to the zero line. So the amplitude there, the amplitude in this graph tells us it's 3. Now, the zero line is initially 2. So if you add 3 to 2, it gives you 5. And then going to the bottom as well, if you have a 2, reduce by 3. It will be negative 1. So the minimum value is negative 1. So this is where you have to be careful 
by understanding the effect of the amplitude and also the vertical shift. So vertical shift just take it as a zero line. I think that would be the easiest way of undoing it. Now there's another concept of what is known as the known as what the the phase shift. The phase shift. Maybe before I talk about the phase shift, let me talk about the effect of B. The B that you're seeing there. So the B that you're seeing there has got an effect on what we call the period. Okay. That's what distinguishes uh, sine two x and just sine x. So if you've got a graph like this, and then you get to have another graph like. It's the same function, but behaving differently. Okay? So one has completed the oscillation faster, the other one is taking longer. So, what's the difference there? So the red one is smaller. Okay? As you can see. So you notice that this is actually pi. That is actually at pi. So we have like 0, we have pi over 2, and then pi. So at pi it is complete. So this graph is sine of 2x. So you're like, ah, how? So the period is like the time it takes is like the, the value of x of a domain through which we expect the evolution to be complete. I don't know if you get what that means. So remember we started from this point. So for us to have both the crescent and and the trough and then get back to our original point. So from there to that point, that is what we are calling the period. So that is determined by the coefficient of x, which is the value b. So the period, which we usually denote, is actually given by 2 pi divided by the value of b, so the absolute value of b, whether it's a negative or a positive value, just use it as a positive value and then divide it into 2 pi. So in this case, the coefficient is a 2, so if you've got 2 pi and then divided by 2, the answer becomes pi, meaning that the graph is supposed to be complete within that uh, domain. Okay, then where is, uh, so meaning that I've actually answered the first part of the question, take note. So all I just had to do is, since there is a value attached to the value of x, we know that the actual graph of sine moves, uh, you know the way it moves. The actual value was supposed to move otherwise. Where it starts from there, it cuts at pi and then reaches at that point. Now after dividing by the 2 which has got an effect on the period, it is supposed to be done within that point. Now, in the case, we'll take that in this case, they wanted us to draw a sketches graph on the domain of, uh, let's say, 0 all the way up to 2 pi. That would mean that the graph has to continue again. Okay? So if it continues, okay, so it will, it will come twice, to repeat itself twice. Okay? Meaning that this is 3 pi over 2, and then that is like 2 pi. That is the first solution that we have. Now, what is the effect of C? C is now the phase shift. C is now the phase shift. So the phase shift moves the graph in the x-axis. The vertical shift, remember that we saw that it was moving the graph up and down. Okay. Don't confuse the amplitude with the vertical shift. So the vertical shift is more like the new zero line. Okay, now if we talk about the phase shift, this is a case where you have sine, and then you have x, and then minus pi over 2. So this pi over 2 that you're having there is what we are calling the phase shift. Okay? So one way that I like thinking about it is, if it is negative... In the actual sense, it is positive. Okay? So what happens if it's negative? It means the graph is going to be 
shift towards the light if it's negative if it's positive it will do the opposite that's one thing that needs to be cleared now if you look at the value of x itself here we don't have any coefficient of x meaning that it's going to be a normal sine function okay it's going to be a normal sine function now the way i like thinking about it faster um maybe just to help you before i actually show you the faster way you just help you understand what's going on here we can actually get to the reason why i'm trying to take time to explain this is because i don't want I want when we start answering we get to move very fast so if you look at that graph sine of x is expected to start from zero like that okay of course i'm not very accurate i'm just like that's the way we expect it to move you know that is zero that is like pi over two pi three pi over two and then two pi right that's the normal way I expect the graph to move. So if we say we have a phase shift of negative pi over 2, it means it's going to go towards the, the right by that same magnitude. So what that means is every point will move towards the right by that same magnitude. So the 0 to the 0 that you have there, add pi over 2. That would mean that the point will now come there. So all the points will begin now shifting, shifting. So the zero has moved to pi over two. That point there will also move by pi over two. It will get at that point. This point which was cutting there will also move. The one that is down will also move. So the graph eventually will come out like this. It is like it will like start now from pi over two. So if you're ending at 2 pi, that's where it's supposed to end. So, so this graph will actually continue and cut there. So that is the way it has behaved differently. It has behaved differently. Okay. So that's the basic idea of the effect of a phase shift. So in other terms, I was trying to show you the shortcut by saying, whatever you may have, so if your phase shift in this case is pi over 2, negative pi over 2, it means you are shifting towards the positive. So you know that the graph starts from 0. So it will start from 0, yes, but it will start at the same phase shift, pi over 2, and then draw the normal graph as you draw it. So... It would make more sense if I was to remove this other graph and all these other values so that you don't get confused. Because I like starting first of all with the sketch and then come and show the values thereafter. So we we'll just know that okay, it will start at pi over two since that's a new phase shift. Remember when it is negative, it goes toward the positive. So we'll start from there. And then we'll draw the normal graph. It doesn't look very balanced. Not good. Not good. Mm, okay, that's fine. <laughs> okay, anyway. So, you know that in the normal sine graph, sine of x, where the period is 2 pi, there was going to be a magnitude of pi pi. So, here it's going to be pi. That's going to be 3 pi over 2. And then here it's going to be 2 pi. So you can actually cancel out this other part if the domain has been specified to end at 2 pi. Okay? Now you can't just leave out the first part. So obviously, you know, that since this graph is moving in that way, it is supposed to continue down and then cut and possibly turn from there. So this graph would have continued going like that on the other side. I've continued going like that on the other side. Okay, so that is how you get to look at the phase shift. If it was towards the negative, we are going to move the graph again to. We move from zero. We go. We start from 
negative pi over 2 if it was a positive if it was like positive so the graph again was going to so if they're interested just from 0 that we're just going to put like a dot there and then sketch here mm -hmm. allow the graph to move it would obviously end up, end up at that point okay so that's a way to handle that now which part have I not talked about I've talked about the period the amplitude the phase shift everything that you actually need to know I think we're now good to start the questions all right so we can now s continue so the first one I already told you what to do there but I'll still repeat so in terms of sketching uh, let's have our graph there and then when you have sine sine of 2x so if you look at that function the only thing that you know about it is uh, the value attached to x is the value called b which has an effect on the period so the period denoted by t is 2 pi divided by that value in this case the value there is 2 so if you divide by 2 you have just a pi so meaning that the graph is supposed to be complete within pi so the fastest way of sketching that is just draw it the normal way you draw it okay that's the normal way you draw a sine graph now you expect that it is going to be done within the period which is pi so meaning that the middle part there will now be pi over 2 and then you're able to distinguish it now from the original graph because the original graph takes 2 pi for it to be complete okay so you can find the half of pi over 2 or that's pi over 4 and then you can try to find uh, the value between 1 over 2 and 1 okay so which of course will be like the half of 3 over 2 which would be like 3 over 4 somewhere there okay so you've sketched the first graph you need to indicate the amplitude the amplitude which is like the coefficient of the graph so it's a 1 negative 1 okay so we're good um, <clears throat> going to the second one so I've already read the foundation so I'll not be taking as much time I've already explained a lot of key concepts on how to go about your sketching okay so I want to sketch the the graph with sine x over 2 sine so you one thing that you need to know is everything else is going to be a coefficient and then leave the x alone okay so that is mean that means that is still a value of b that is still a value of b okay so a value of b in this case is 1 over 2 so we need to find the period again period is going to be 2 pi divided by the value of b the value of b in this case is 1 over 2 which is like 0 0.5 and if you try to divide 0 0.5 into 2 into 1 is twice so it's going to be 4 pi meaning that it will take 4 pi for the graph to actually be complete that's what it means so draw it the normal way this is the easiest way of doing your sketching draw it the normal way you know it normal way you know it like that <laughs> ah, what have I done <laughs> uh, uh, okay I'll draw it again so okay that is our graph <laughs> uh, so the amplitude has not been affected it's still going to be 1 the minimum value will be negative 1 now what has been affected the period so it's going to be it's going to end at 4 pi so meaning that the middle part there is going to be 2 pi the half of 2 pi is going to be pi and then obviously this is going to be is this going to be like 3 pi yeah definitely 3 pi yeah so this is like the way we have our graph this is what makes it different okay you know that the normal graph of sine is actually supposed to be complete 
within 2 pi, right? Now this one has taken 4 pi. That's what the effect of the value of B has on the graph. Okay. Now let's look at uh, the next one. We are on C now. Okay, we're trying to see the effect of C. <coughs> so all the same. Now we know the cosine graph. Cosine graph starts from there and goes like this. That's how a cosine graph is. So I can actually even draw it. Cosine graph. Why am I drawing it that way? I want to draw, I want to do a good graph. Okay. Okay, fair enough. So there is no effect, there is no value attached to cos, so it's just a one as the amplitude. So I'm trying to show you the effect of the values that are attached to the function. Now we have a value attached to x, which is pi. So that one has got an effect again on the period. Now the period is going to be 2 pi divided by the value attached to x. So in this case, we have pi attached to x. So if pi would divide, you have an amplitude of a 2. So these are the cases where pi may not necessarily appear in your sketching. So our amplitude is a 2. Sorry, our period is a 2, meaning that the graph is going to end at 2. Okay? Meaning that the middle part is going to be half of that, which is going to be a 1. Now, if you think about it smartly, this is going to be 3 over 2. That is going to be half. We've just excluded the pi. Okay? As simple as it is, we're done. Then the other graph, <coughs> what do we have attached? So, since it's cosine, I'll just remove these values and then we see what the new values that we are likely to have. So, again, y is equal to cosine of cosine of pi. So, I'll pull out pi over 2 and then remain with x. She's trying to show that pi over 2 has got an effect on the period. Anything attached to x has got an effect on the period. So, 2 pi divided by that. So, we're going to be dividing by pi over 2. Now, pi over 2... Um, we have so we have we are dividing by pi over 2 in other terms you have 2 pi divided by pi over 2 which is more like multiplying by the reciprocal which is going to be multiplied by 2 over pi so the pi goes away 2 times 2 is 4 so we have 4 as a result the other way you can actually do it faster is by just Pi over 2 is the same as 0 0.5 pi. So 0 0.5 into 2 is 4. Pi will divide gives you 4. So meaning that our endpoint is going to be a 4. <coughs> so with all these examples that we are looking at, I believe you now understood the effect of the value of B on the graph. So we have a 4. Obviously the half is expected to be a 2. And if that's the case, then you have a 1 there. And the three there. Okay. And then finally, you, so we've done all the four. We can now proceed and look at the, hey, Are you enjoying the sketching? So you can actually learn all about sketching with uh, question 11. Question 12, question 13, and including the questions uh, below. So you can actually understand how to answer question 14, 15, 16, and then also how to go about uh, solving of trigonometric equations, and then learn everything you need to learn about trigonometry. So just use the link in the description to basically get to access all these solutions. And you'll be able to learn how to sketch, how to answer different questions. Actually, there are even other questions from 1 all the way up to 7. Okay, so let's continue now. This is now... Uh, <laughs> things are getting more interesting and interesting. 
So we've now reached the part where we've like a, we have a negative attached to the sine graph. So let's try to understand what happens to when you, you know actually that the, the, the original graph is something that is like this. Now when you add a negative to a graph, what it means is all the values that you have as positives, they'll become negative. The negative ones become the positive ones. So it's more like it's a reflection about the x-axis. Knowing that the negative is attached to the entire graph, it makes the y values change. So that being the original function means the opposite is going to be like this. That's what it means. So instead of a graph starting on top, the graph is expected to, instead of being like that, it's expected to instead go down and come back like this. That's a refraction. All the same for the cosine. You know that the cosine is initially like this. So if it is a negative, it will also start from here and come out like that. That's one thing that you need to understand. So in this case, not only is the graph expected, not only the, is the graph negative to come out like this, but we also need to understand that there is also still an effect by the value of b attached to x there. So of course we expect the, the graph to come out like this. Let me try. I want to draw it a bit accurate. Um, Yeah, I think that will, yeah. And then, we can try to, yeah, we can now try to find the actual value of a period. So we have 2 pi, we divide by the value attached to the value of x. So in this case, we have got negative sign. And then we can pull out pi over 3, and then we have x there. So pi over 3 is the value we are dividing with pi over 3. Then you have 2 pi, so you can multiply by the reciprocal, 3 over pi, pi pi, that's like now, 3 into 10 multiply it is like 6, yeah, 6. So what that means is the graph is going to end at, uh, if my calculations are okay, it's going to end at 6, meaning that the half part is going to be 3. Of course, half of 3 is what? 3 over 2. How true is it? Yeah, 3 over 2. And then 3 plus 6 is 9. 9 divided by 2, that is going to be like 9 over 2. So, this is basically the way the graph is expected to come out. Now, I know you have questions about the amplitude. So, the fact that there is only a 1 there again, so it's still 1 and negative 1 respectively. That's how basically the function gets to come out for E. Um... We can quickly go to we can go to F and see something different come out of it. It's a normal cosine function with a two pi attached to as a value of b. <coughs> so remember it's a positive value. So just draw it normally as you would. That's the way you expect it to come out. The normal basic cosine function. Now we know that in a normal one, it ends at 2 pi. Let me not say the normal one, but the, the basic one. Now let's try to see what's going to happen here. <coughs> you have cosine 2 pi attached to x. So meaning that the period is going to be 2 pi again divided by the absolute value of uh, 2 pi. So that is going to give us a 1. Very funny graph. So it's going to end at 1. The half of 1 is 0 0.5, which is half. And then half of half is 1 over 4. And then 1 plus 1 over 2 is going to be like 3 over 2. So the half of it is going to be 3 over 4. The amplitude still remains the same. 1, and then we have negative 1 as a minimum value. 
So that's basically how you sketch that graph. If you want to end from 0 all the way up to 2, the graph can actually continue. Okay? It can turn from there. That can be like the maximum point and then it starts to go supposed to, supposed to start coming down just from there. Something like that. There's supposed to be a continuation. And then we can now go to look at the other parts now where we now have the introduction of the phase shift which I already explained the effect. I already explained the effect of the phase shift. So for G <coughs> So feel free to pause the video and just try it out. So your normal cosine graph starts from zero like that now the one starting from when I now I said when it's negative pi over two it means that's where the graph will start from. If it is negative it means you're shifting towards the right. So let's have pi over two somewhere. Let's have it here. Pi over two. So I said when it is negative we are shifting towards the right. So that's called the first shift that value there. Now remember that in this case there's nothing attached to the value of x, meaning that there's no effect on the period, right? No effect on the period. So the period is still remains to be 2 pi. Okay, good, good. So how do you go about it? What we're going to do is this. We know that the cosine graph starts from the top part of the graph like that. So the fact that we've shifted towards the right that point that starts from there will start from where we've shifted. Let's say somewhere there. And then we'll draw it the normal way. Like that. Now we'd have to be smart about it. Why do I say you have to be smart about it? It's because you need to estimate where the graph has cut. So if it is a normal graph with a normal period, since this is pi over 2, this is definitely going to be pi. The middle part there is going to be 3 pi over 2. And then the last point there is going to be 2 pi. So meaning that if the domain was indicating to end at 2 pi, you can just show dotted lines after, like that. Now going the other side, remember in case the graph wants you to start from 0. So you know that there is no maximum point after that. The graph is supposed to like turn down, right? That's the way you expect it, and it will continue like that. So, <coughs> definitely, the pi over two is a starting point. So, pi over two and then zero. <coughs> so one thing that you're seeing is, this is actually equivalent to a sine graph. So sine of x is actually equal to cosine of x shifted to the right by pi over two. Okay, as you've noticed. Now the amplitude of course, don't forget to indicate one negative one y the x so you've now understood the effect of the phase shift on the graph now for the sign we have a positive value in state we have a positive value in state for h so meaning that's going to be shift towards the negative side so pause the video and try it out so equally uh, the idea remains the same The idea remains the same in terms of sketching. So you're going to have, instead of starting from 0, right, it's going to start at negative pi over 2. Negative pi over 2. Now it starts from where? It starts from, like, it starts like that. So it's going to start from there. Um, 
it's not so uniform. Okay, something like that. Now, we can make this to be dotted because in most of the cases, they may specify they want you to start from zero all the way up to pi or two pi. So, make this part dotted. So one thing that you're noticing is like it's coming out more like the cosine again, coming out like the cosine graph. Now this will be, of course, pi over two. This will be pi, three pi over two, and then eventually end at two pi there. Everything else is dotted after. This is uh, one, and then negative one. So that's what it means to shift, phase shift, okay? Phase shift. Pi over 2, a positive means you shift towards the left. And then <coughs> we're now on I, which is now involving both the phase and the vertical, because we've got a plus 1 there. So I told you if you've got a plus 1, what that means is eh, that would be a new zero line. Of course, of course, the zero is going to be there. Now you can draw a new dotted line to indicate the new zero line. Just make it dotted like that. Okay. Um. So that is uh, a negative what? That's a positive one. That's a positive one. Positive one. And then we have like negative pi over 4, x minus pi over 4, x minus pi over 4. So the negative pi over 4 is the phase shift. Now the fact that it's negative, it means we're shifting towards the, the positive, right? Okay. So again, it means we're going to start at pi over 4. Now pi over 4, if you are somebody who are very familiar with origins, it means that is like the 45. So where does the sine graph start from? This is a positive sine graph, so it's going to move a normal way. It starts from 0, right? Now our 0 line in this case is 1. Now the amplitude is still a 1 there. So it's just going to go up to 2, and then on the bottom it will go to 0. Because the amplitude... It means the, your vertical shift, you go up by 1, you go down by 1. So it will be 0 and 2 respectively. So the graph move like this. It's going to go up to 2. Let me put properly here. Yes. <coughs> Why is it coming out like that again? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, so we are started at pi over 4, and then so you know that since in this case the period itself is normal, by that, uh, what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is uh, we don't have anything attached to the value of x, so the period is 2 pi. So meaning that if that's a normal way, you need to add your period to the starting point to determine the end. So pi over 4 plus 2 pi. So these are the things you do. So pi plus 8 pi. So you end up at 9 pi over 4. So we're ending at 9 pi over 4, which of course exceeds the 2 pi. So you can divide by 2 to determine the middle part. If you divide by 2, it's going to be 9 pi over 8. Lovely. So the graph can still continue, by the way. You can still find the half of this to get the middle part. 
so how do we know where the graph is going to cut as it is uh, as it reaches zero you can actually plug in sign the value of uh, <coughs> x to be zero ninja of negative pi over four plus a one so this is an angle between zero and 90 so what is sine 45 it's actually going to go to the negative part sine of negative pi over 4 so sine 45 so sine 45 is the angle that is equal to cosine 45 so that is like 1 over root of 2 plus a 1 So we can just estimate without wasting a lot of time. So one way you can estimate is by looking at, by finding the middle part here. How do you find the middle part? So I advise, if you have that end point, we can just divide by half to get the middle part. Wait, 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 wait. Is that, is that advisable? No. So it's not. So actually, you're supposed to <coughs> get this point, add to that point, and then divide by 2. So 9 pi over 4 plus pi over 4. You add them, you're going to get 10 pi. So it will be 10 pi over 4 as the middle part instead. <coughs> 10 pi over 4. How is it 10 pi again? 9 pi plus, yeah, it would be 10 pi over 4, but multiply by half again to try to get the middle part. It would be 10 pi over 8. Yeah, that makes more sense. Okay. And then the graph may continue this side. So as we saw, we're going to have like sine pi, sine, 40, sine negative 45. Which is going to be a negative value because we are in the fourth quadrant and then sine of so we have like sine negative 45 plus a one yeah so one over root of two plus a one so that tells us a slightly <coughs> slightly above one is it Sine zero 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 zero. Let me use the calculator here. I see the actual value of of that. So, if that. so sine. Let me try to actually show you the calculator there. So sine of negative forty five. Plus a one. So zero point two nine. I don't know why I was getting confused there because I did, this makes sense because sine forty five is one over root of two. Now the fact that it's in the the fact that it's negative forty five means that it's going back in the fourth quadrant. So it's a negative value, and then we have a one. So it is going to be less than one. Approximate to zero point what? Zero point two. So it will be slightly higher than Yeah. It will not cut at zero. Something like that. And then we can actually look at the last one. Mm, for the last one we also have um, a vertical shift which is in this case is negative one meaning that we're going to the negative part okay so it take out to be negative one the amplitude is still a one because there is no value attached to cosine there so it's just a one 
So meaning that the maximum point will be 0, the minimum will be minus 1 going down, so it will be negative 2. This is the value of y we, where we expect our function to move. Now, we have again the phase shift, the positive value meaning that is towards the negative. So if it is towards the negative, we can actually start at an extension which we're going to call negative pi over 4. So meaning that our graph will start somewhere there. Negative pi over 4, take it to be this line here. So that is a cosine graph, right? That's a cosine graph. The cosine graph, how does it move? It moves, it starts from maximum value. Okay, it starts from maximum value. So, to avoid it being complicated, we can actually do this. <coughs> Let's just draw the value. Let's just draw the x-axis, and then start it from negative pi over four, and then draw the graph. Now, no, take note of uh, the vertical what, the vertical shift, which is a negative one, and then we have put the actual value at a zero line. So. The vertical shift becomes a new zero line, so this is like negative negative one, and then what we have here is zero itself, and then of course the middle the, the bottom line is going to be negative two like that. So the graph is starting from negative pi over four because it has moved towards the left because of a positive phase shift. The negative one is the one that is determining the zero line. So if that is so that would be amplitude. So cosine graph behaves like this. Okay. So there is no change to the period because there is no value attached to x. Okay, that's why the graph has moved like that. Now we are not sure where this graph has cut exactly. Okay. Now, one thing that I can actually help you to do is uh, identify how the graph is moved. How is it moved? So, you know the basic graph moves this way. So, it was initially at 2 pi, right? So, you need to subtract uh, by the phase shift to determine where it has now shifted to. So 2 pi minus pi over 4. So if you multiply 4 times 2, that is like going to be 8 pi, so minus pi, so 7 pi over 4. So this new value is 7 pi over 4. So equally, this other point, which was 3 pi over 2, you can do the same as well, subtract, and see where the graph has now moved. So your common denominator there is 4, and then 2 into 4 is 2, 6, minus pi, so that's 5 pi over 4. Then the middle part there was uh, pi, so pi minus pi over 4, I believe it's going to be 3 pi over 4. So the new middle part is 3 pi over 4. Then which other value are remaining with? Where it is now 0. So where was it cutting at 0? So at 0, we're now mus we're subtracting minus pi over 4. And that's exactly what has happened there. It has moved to that point. Now, where do we expect uh, the graph to cut the x-axis? Or the graph to cut the y-axis? 
the other terms the the y intercept what is the y intercept the y intercept is a point where the value of of x is equal to 0 or yeah, the value of x is equal to 0 so it'd be cosine that would be 0 and then pi over 4 minus 1 now pi over 4 is 45 cosine 45 is 1 <coughs> over root of 2 minus a 1 I'm getting that from the special triangles so the special triangle you can estimate the value of 45 is 1 1 root of 2 45 45 the price of Katoa there now approximately that value is going to be what <coughs> I got zero point two something something so why is it expected to be I got zero point something something so it's going to be slightly the slightly somewhere e so that's where we expect the graph to be exactly the y axis to be and I think the graph has now finally come out okay so you've seen the effect of the phase shift it has moved the graph towards the left when it is positive okay by the magnitude given and then the the negative one which is the vertical shift is the new zero line okay affecting the amplitude value and then yeah we've also talked about the effect of the value attached to x which of course has not been applied in this case because we just have a one so the period remains two pi so hopefully you now know the basic way to go about the sketching of these graphs so i think we've already answered these so we now we are now ready to go to 11. are you enjoying the sketching so you can actually learn all about sketching with uh, question 11 question 12 question 13 and including the questions uh, below so you can actually understand how to answer question 14 15 16 and then also how to go about uh, solving of trigonometric equations and then learn everything you need to learn about trigonometry so just use the link in the description to basically get to access all these solutions and you'll be able to learn how to sketch how to answer different questions actually there are even other questions from one all the way up to seven all right so <laughs> this video is going to be very interesting so we're answering now this question which involves uh, the, the contangent, the tan, the cosecant, and the cosecant sketching of a graph. So we've not talked about how to sketch the tangent, so I'll explain how to sketch the tangent graph just here so that you basically get to have an idea. So one thing that I want you to know is each time you have what we call asymptotes, okay, these ones are going to be the, the, the vertical asymptotes. Are they vertical asymptotes or <laughs> okay yeah so if you've got asymptotes like that and then you have a zero point somewhere let's say here the way you expect that graph to behave is uh, like this okay or if you've got a zero point somewhere there there are two ways the graph is expected to behave either this way for the tangent or this way so I'll be able to tell how okay so what it means here is the values of y are never ending okay so infinite now let's try to understand the way the, 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 the graph actually gets to to be f so if you have the normal tan function tan x the idea I can give you is uh, the, the simplest way of sketching this graph is just put your negative pi over to somewhere there and then your pi over to somewhere there okay 
come up with uh, the same plot as pi over 2 and also so why am I saying so? I'm saying so because you know that that point there is 0 tan of 0 now you know that tan is the same as sine divided by cosine so it's the same as sine 0 over cosine of 0 now sine of 0 is equal to a 0 cosine of 0 is equal to a 1 so 0 divided by 1 is 0 so that is a possible 0 point now as you go to tan 45 tan 45 is a case where we said cosine and sine are equal so that is equal to a 1 I, I hope now you're getting the basic idea there. So tan 45, which is of course somewhere here, between pi over 2 is a 90, so somewhere there it's equal to like a 1. Okay. So what means is the graph going that side is going like that. Okay. And then as we go the other side, it's going like that, down. So this will continue happening now. So when do, we, when do we again expect the graph to be equal to a zero or tan to be equal to zero? So the only way we can have a zero in this kind of a graph is... <coughs> okay, let's assume we don't know. Well, we know that the next part will be pi. The next part will be 3 pi over 2. So how do we know the behavior of a function at that point? So if we get pi, tan of pi, Tan of pi is going to be sine pi over cosine of pi. Now, sine 180 is what? It's a zero. Cosine of pi is going to be what? <coughs> that is a one. Is that a one or negative one? Something like that. Anyway, uh, if you go to the graph, go back to the graph of the cosine. So it's a negative one. So despite it being a negative one, you still get a zero because the numerator is a zero. So this is another zero possible point. So how do we expect the graph to behave? So it will behave the same way. So even that one will be the asymptote there. So it will continue behaving that way. So it's going to start from there. Um, and cut there again like that. So you've seen that within the diameter or within the domain of pi, this is the way tangent is actually behaving there. Okay. This is the way it is behaving. So I can actually start by answering the <coughs> the second part of the question. So the second one says we need to find uh, we need to sketch negative tan. So the first thing that you need to notice is the negative part. So that negative sign is changing whatever the, the, the way the graph is behaving. So it will instead start from there and come like this again like that so it's like a refraction again <coughs> okay now the other thing that is also affecting the graph is uh, the aspect of the aspect of what that is the we've got a pi attached to x so it's going to affect the period so the period is of course going to be 2 pi divided by that value which is pi giving us eh? So a pi will go away and then you remain basically with, with just a 2. Okay. So therefore, <coughs> to avoid confusing yourself, I would advise you just like remove a pi to whatever values we have there and sketch it the normal way. So <coughs> we'll do this. I want it to be as simple as it possibly can be. So this is going to be negative pi over 2. This is going to be pi. So I already told you to say, in the normal way, expect it to come like this. Now the fact that we've got a negative, it means the negative values will become positive and vice versa. So the graph will instead come from that other side like this. Okay. So of course, take note of your asymptotes. Clear to show the asymptotes. The graph should never cut the asymptotes. Okay. So that is at uh, pi over two. 
so of course in most of the cases they're not interested on the negative part so that's where the graph comes out like that but I'm just trying to show you for the sake of understanding now that is in a normal way okay that is in a normal way where we just don't have that pi attached there now the fact that it is attached it is having an effect on the period instead of the period just being um, 2 pi the period is going to be 2 okay so how are we going to take that so remove the pi remove the pi so that we see what's going to happen to the graph so it's going to be something that is going to to be more like okay? so we have instead of pi over 2 we have half and, and again we have a 1 instead of pi and then we have 3 pi over 2 so it's just a 3 over 2 and then we have a 2 there <coughs> so of course we know between within a value of like a 1 we're supposed to have that full kind of a graph so the other asymptote will occur at 3 pi over 2 so the graph again will come in that same way I don't want it to so like that going up going down and then again to start from there again and just cut at 2 that's the way it's going to end so that is the way the graph has behaved there that's the way we've, we've sketched the <coughs> negative turn so negative turn pi over x, pi x so the question was saying we need to clearly state the period so the period in this case is a 2 I've shown you how to calculate at the amplitude the amplitude is where the graph is expected to end now you've seen that this is you've got a symptom so the amplitude is just going up so it's just infinite and then the phase shift did we have any phase shift in this case no we didn't have any phase shift the graph has not shifted and then did we have any vertical shift no so yes that's zero zero <coughs> and zero only taking note of the period to be a two the amplitude is infinite um, so if all these ideas of oh, now to go about the sketching of the tangent function I can confidently take you back to the first part of the question so there we have y is equal to contangent to of contangent to x so that's what we need to sketch there so how do we understand the behavior of that contangent function how do we expect it to possibly behave as we as we sketch it what do you think is going to have an effect on that graph so one way you can think of that graph is uh, take it to be assume it's just tangent of 2 of x how do we sketch it remember the way we are from sketching the normal one is uh, let me show the asymptotes again so remember if that is 0 this is going to be pi over 2 we'll have pi in between and then we'll have uh, 3 pi over 2 and then we'll have 2 pi in between there so in case you are forgetting other symptoms ah, just ask yourself remember tan is the same as sine over cosine right so just ask yourself where sine is equal to 0 so you notice that sine is actually equal to 0 if you draw the graph at three identical points at 0 at 180 and also at 2 pi sine is equal to 0 so that's, those are the points where you expect the graph to exist so it's at 0 pi 
and it's still pi. So this part we say the graph starts like that, right? Okay. And then at this point it also starts like that and go down there, even there. So even there we also expect the, the same. And in the case where we're ending at 2 pi, this other part is like removed. Okay. So it comes out like that. So this is with a normal period of 2 pi regimes. Now, in this case, where they're giving us the, we've got a 2 attached to the value of x, meaning that is, we need to divide the 2 pi by the 2, giving us now the yeah, giving us a period of pi, meaning that the graph is supposed to be complete within pi. Within pi. So all these all these are supposed to be indicated within pi. So one way of acting smart is by thinking of it in this way. So since we're ending at two pi, if we're ending at two pi, this part of course does not exist. So you can just remove uh, to avoid confusions and just avoid losing yourself. Just remove those values there and just know that uh, the last point is supposed to exist at uh, pi and then divide by 2 so that you go back to the half point where you're at. So it's going to be pi over 2 there and then again divide by 2, it will be pi over 4 add pi and pi over 2 of course they'll give you 3 pi uh, over 2 divided by 2 <coughs> to be 3 pi over 4 yeah I think I'm trying to give you I don't know if <laughs> uh, I think people might actually call it Cook's method <laughs> yeah but it works it works yeah it is going definitely going to work so this is the way you expect the tan of 2x graph to basically get to come out. Now in our question, they want us to find uh, contangent of 2x. Now, contangent is the same as 1 over tan of 2x. Now, what does that mean? What does that mean? So this is actually, what this means is, is you actually have the reciprocal of the actual graph. The reciprocal of the actual graph that we have is the expected result or solution to to the graph so how are we going to sketch a graph now so if it's a reciprocal it means the values are going to be the opposite these values that are high will be lower and so on and so forth so how is it going to come out so we can actually try to picture what we are trying to say here. When we have the values of uh, tan, let's take some few values of x. So x, and then we have tan of x. Um, okay, let's take a few ones. 0, pi over 2, and pi. So you know that tan 0 is what? Sine 0 over cosine of 0. So sine 0 is a 0. So that's going to be a 0. As the graph even tells there. Tan like of pi over 2. That's like sine 90 over cosine 90. Cosine 90 is a 0. So that is undefined. And then tan sine 180 will be a 0. So that is going to be a 0. So now you know that where the the vertical at where the vertical asymptotes does asymptotes are going to be occurring is where we the graph does not exist so like in the normal case it's supposed to occur at pi over 2 okay now in this case if we introduce now contangent of x which is going to be like the opposite which is going to have like cosine of x over tan over sine of x in such a case, we are trying to avoid the parts where sine is equal to zero. So, 
so it will be the opposite okay so what does that mean in reality what that means in reality if we look at the graph we the graphing that we expect if we have um, let me try to show you part of the graph so if we expected our graph to come out like this I'll take the, these two points uh, 0 pi over 2 and pi so we know that 0 is where the graph is there so we expect the graph to come out like this right because pi over 2 is an asymptote in the tangent function again pi is a zero point of course the next tangent will be 3 pi over 2 so the graph here is also expected to be something like this something like that right this is what we are expecting and we are seeing noticing there now if we introduce a contangent the contangent we are saying it is basically the opposite so where we have a zero it becomes asymptote okay because of what we are saying there is a dash there and then where else do we have an asymptote we also have an asymptote at pi so it is also an asymptote so how do we expect the graph to actually basically move that is the case is it going to start like that and come like this or it will be the other way around so we know of course pi over 2 will give us a 0 meaning it will be there now what happens if you basically get to try contangent of a certain value is it going to be above the x-axis or below the x-axis for argument is sake, we can get uh, the, 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 the other way <laughs> of basically get, getting to reason about it is asking yourself where tangent is positive. So all students take coffee. All students take coffee. So if you are after pi over 2, if you are after pi over 2, and then of course that is happening between pi 0 and pi, 0 and pi. So and then you are after pi over 2. At pi over 2, it's 0. Now, as you go into this other quadrant before pi, it is going to be negative, meaning that it will be below the, the x-axis. So, it is expected to move like this. So, here it will be above, and then there it will be below. Okay, so this actually gives the basic idea, or a basic sense of what we're trying to say here. So actually, I never even thought of this, but this is one way we can actually think of it. So don't forget that this graph that we have on the left is a graph of tan of 2x. So I was just trying to show you the basic idea. So contangent of 2x, as I've showed you, to say there's a difference, contangent will be like the opposite. So the graph will be expected to actually start from here. start from there so the zero point will now be the 45 so here the zero point will be this point the zero point there will be at that asymptote and then the graph will move like this so it will be like that and then get to subtract the pi over 2 Pi over 2 like that. Okay. So that will be a asymptote. And then again, it will move like that. Cut that point and like that. So you are seeing the, the kind of reflection that we have. And then overall, <coughs> the graph we are having after reciprocal is something that has come out like this. so good now 
again. And then we have an asymptote here. Another asymptote here. So this is pi over 2. That is occurring at uh, that's occurring at what? <coughs> 180. So pi. Wait, 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 wait. I hope I'm not losing you again. It's actually 3 pi over 4. Yeah, anyway, let me remove the unwanted parts. This is unwanted. So this is the actual graph that is required. The red one. Yeah, I'm sure you, you get the basic idea there. <coughs> so basic idea is know the basic tangent function which of course starts like this um, better thought of to be let me just straight summarize everything here yeah? so the tangent function better thought of to be a graph that starts from So you know that the tangent graph is going to be equal to zero at a point where sine is equal to zero. So where are those points where, tan, where sine is equal to zero? So if you draw the, the, the sine graph, the parts where it cuts a zero is eh? zero at it, zero at, so at zero, and then at pi and also two pi. So pi and also two pi. So those are the points where we expect the so let's try to sh now show it in summary. So we have zero, we have pi over two, we have pi, we have three pi over two, and then we have two pi. Now, <coughs> know your quadrants as well to help you understand. Know your quadrants, know your quadrants. So the points where it is, where sign is equal to zero, those are the points where the graph will be actually be cutting the x-axis. Now, the other points where cosine is zero, those will be the asymptotes now. Those will be the asymptotes. So this is, of course, asymptotes are supposed to be dotted. Just bear with me; they are not going to be dotted. So that is an asymptote. Now, all students take coffee. All students take coffee. So remaining our well, that's the thing I should remind us of our quadrants, all students take off it. So you ask yourself, do you expect the tangent graph to be positive or negative in the first quadrant? So in the first quadrant, all are positive. So the graph will come like this. Now in the second quadrant, only sign is positive, so tangent will be negative. So here it will become from below. And there it will go up like that. And it is true, actually. As you can see, in the third quadrant, it's positive. So here it is positive. Here it's negative. There it is positive. And then finally, again, in the last quadrant, it's going to be negative. So it will come like this again. So this is negative. So that is how we can easily sketch the tangent graph by using the by using the quadrants and understanding where it is positive or negative and using and, and identifying the symptoms. Now for now if I take you back to the contangent, the contangent it is actually the opposite. So how do you basically easily get to sketch it as well? So you can easily sketch the contangent in this way. The contangent is the opposite of tangent so it's going to be cosine of x over sine of x so it, this is going to be equal to zero in a case where cosine of x is equal to zero 
So where is cosine of x equal to 0? So if you draw the cosine graph, starts from there. So the parts where it cuts x-axis are pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. So pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. So these are parts where it is expected to be equal to 0. So the other parts where sine is equal to 0 expected to be 0, pi, 2 pi, those will be now the asymptotes in this case. Of course, asymptotes are supposed to be dotted lines. Bear with me again, I'll just draw the lines. So these will be the asymptotes for the contingent function, like that. Now ask yourself again, so where is, <laughs> where do you expect, uh, so in the first quadrant, of course, you expect that they are all positives. Just reduce the volume a bit. So in the first quadrant, it's they are all positive. In the second quadrant, sine is positive. And then the third tangent is positive. In the fourth, you have cosine being positive. So that being the case there, in the first quadrant, they are all positive. So where do you expect it to be? So it's between 0 and pi over 2. So the graph, that being the asymptote, it will move like this. Let me use a different color there. And cut the zero there. And then it's of course expected to be negative in the second quadrant. Okay. Again here to be here to be positive. This is the third quadrant. So as I drink the contingent for graph. And then, what basically happens after, now if we just, this this being the contingent graph, now if we introduce the 2x there, after introducing the 2x, the 2x makes it to be, you can now remove where there's 2 pi, like just remove the angles and just put like, at the last point, you put the same new period that you're going to have, which is going to be, of course, pi okay because 2 divided into 2 pi to just be pi and then start cutting it into half so it will be first of all pi over 2 there there it will be pi over 4 there add to pi and pi over to 3 pi over 2 so it will be 3 pi over is it 4 yeah so this is basically how we can easily sketch it the fastest way of course, it took time for us to just get to this summary. Hey, are you enjoying the sketching? So you can actually learn all about sketching with uh, question 11, question 12, question 13, and including the questions uh, below. So you can actually understand how to answer question 14, 15, 16. And then also how to go about uh, solving of trigonometric equations and then learn everything you need to learn about trigonometry so just use the link in the description to basically get to access all these solutions and you'll be able to learn how to sketch how to answer different questions actually there are even other questions from one all the way up to seven but so we'll continue let's look at uh, now the third one <coughs> so we're sketching um y is equal to second of pi over 2 x what um, so if you write it in the form of factorizing whatever is attached to x you have pi over 2 and then you have x so anything attached to x affects the period so period is going to be 2 pi divided by that value attached to x so we're dividing by pi over 2 Okay, so 2 pi multiplied by 2 over pi. So you basically end up with a 4 there as your period in this case. So we have a period of a 4. The amplitude is, of course, the coefficient of a function itself. So it's just a 1. The, the 
phase shift we don't have anything vertical shift we don't have anything okay so you can easily sketch this graph how do you go about it we need to understand the way a second graph basically behaves so second one thing that you need to know is the second is one over the cosine of x so quickly come up with a table of values you expect that if you've got x and then cosine of x you know that <coughs> if you sketch the cosine graph um, this is a graph that starts at 1 like that this is of course 0 pi over 2 pi um, 3 pi over 2 and then ends with 2 pi at that point this is the case where you have the, the period being 2 pi okay now <clears throat> what we expect what we expect is if I let me try to come up with a table of values using whatever we have here so at 0 at 0 there it is 1 cosine of 0 is 1 at pi over 2 it's 0 cosine 90 is 0 and then at 3 pi over 2 it is 0 wow 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 no we need to go to pi first of all <coughs> so if we go to pi at pi it is equal to negative 1 and then at 3 pi over 2 it's basically equal to a 0 of course we have 2 pi at the end now at 2 pi it's equal to what it's equal to 1 so now if you are trying to sketch second you need to know that second is 1 over cosine so there's one thing that you're going to notice again so 1 over cosine so divide here it is going to be a 1 if you are dividing by a 0 it becomes undefined divide by negative 1 to be negative 1 divide again by by 0 it will be undefined there it will be 1 so a part where you've got where it is undefined those are going to be the asymptotes for the graph so we can clearly see where the asymptotes are where the graph cosine itself cuts 0 okay so what are those points on the graph so again bear with me the asymptotes I'll not make them um, broken lines or dotted lines you can actually do that <coughs> so we have where is it zero it's at pi over two it's at uh, three pi so pi over two so zero at pi over two don't worry we'll change these values later and then you have got pi and then you've got three pi over two and then you've got two pi so the cosine graph was zero at these points at the points where we, there's a dotted line there that is going to be asymptote so at pi over two so i'll draw a line there so make make sure you make it dotted or broken and then the other point is at 3 pi over 2 so those are the asymptotes now for you to know how you are going to sketch your graph you need to understand again where the cosine is positive negative and so on um, <clears throat> so all students take coffee very important very important <laughs> All students have to take off. <laughs> yeah, so all students take calculus. So cosine is positive in the last quadrant and the first. So if you look at the first quadrant, it's going to be positive. Okay, it's going to be positive. Now, at cosine of zero, at zero, it is equal to a one. So if you have a one there. Let's have a negative one somewhere here. So the graph is existing at that point. So pi over two, it is expected to be positive. So the values will be going up like that. If we are to go to towards the negative, you'd find that the graph would be go like this again. Okay. Ending at another asymptote. Obviously, you expect it to be negative pi over two. Um, <coughs> and then where we've got pi. 
where we've got pi it is equal to negative 1 so it's going to be there and then of course you know that in the second and the third quadrant cosine is negative so it will be going towards this way and then towards this way this is supposed to be parabolas good parabolas not the way I'm drawing them so going down showing indicating that those are asymptotes they can't cut them and then where else is it equal to where else is it equal to zero or where else is equal to equal to zero? so at 2 pi again it's equal to like a 1 so in this in this last quadrant it's expected to be positive so it's obviously going to come out like this okay it was of course going to even proceed in the first quadrant going up like that so that's the way you get basically get to sketch uh, the the way you get to sketch the, the second graph now there's one thing that we've not yet put into consideration and that is the the what <coughs> the period the period we have found is four so we can now remove these values that are there i was just trying to use them to help you understand whatever we're doing so meaning that at the last point they are going to have a four because that is like the period so if you get to find the middle part you're going to find it's going to be a two so ending up with one two three four and that is usually the fastest way you can sketch the graph <coughs> with all that understanding you can easily sketch the last one knowing that cosecant means one over sine so the sine graph just reduce the volume a bit that side please So if you've got cosecant, you're dealing with sine graph. A sine graph starts from zero and move like that. So that's a sine graph. If you come up with a simple table of values, you're going to have your value of x and then the sine graph. So take zero, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, okay so sine of zero is of course clear the zero sine of pi over two is clear the one and then sine of uh, pi is clearly also zero there remember i use uh, like the values there <coughs> pi over two <coughs> so zero three pi over two is equal to negative one and then two pi of course is also equal to a zero clearly so the parts where the graph is equal to zero those are going to be the asymptotes for the graph so because cosecant is one over sine so this is going to be an asymptote an asymptote an asymptote everything else will be the same one negative one okay so you know you, you now you know you now know the way the graph is expected to basically get to come out so disregarding whatever we have first of all and just trying to take it as as we would normally take it so let's try to put whatever we could have so pi over 2 pi 3 pi over 2 and then 2 pi so the asymptotes are going to be the so where we have dashes where sign is equal to 0 so that is like zero itself and then <coughs> what else we also have at pi and then we also have at two pi those are asymptotes make the, make sure you make them broken lines by that i mean like that Because you don't want it to come out as a line. <coughs> okay, <coughs> so with that understanding, we can actually proceed. Um, now you need to, of course, take note of the quadrants again. <coughs> so all students take calculus. So in the first and the second, that's where we expect the 
sign to be positive so at pi over 2 it is equal to a 1 so you can have a 1 there and the negative 1 straight through there so since it is positive it's going to be this way it's positive in both the first and the second so it will behave like that 3 pi over 2 is a negative 1 and then in these other two quadrants it's negative so it will go like this okay so that's the, uh, the graph is supposed to go towards that and show clearly show it's going down there okay <coughs> this is the way you expect of course whenever you've got asymptotes like that just know that the, the amplitude is never ending like it's just going 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 so it's infinite and then so i think that applies to the previous question as well that's what we saw now the period in this case is supposed to be calculated the period is going to be any value attached to x in this case is half so 2 pi divided by half or 0 0.5 it will be 4 <coughs> so 4 pi so where we've got the 2 pi at the end there we have to change I ah, will have 4 pi the middle part 2 pi so that will have to be pi this will be 3 pi that is easily the fastest way of sketching these graphs you know we don't have any phase shift so phase shift zero vertical shift zero amplitude infinite period four pi you've answered the questions now we're back to to question 12 which is like <coughs> testing us on whatever we've we've learned or covered so far how do we basically get to under it are you enjoying the sketching so you can actually learn all about sketching with uh, question 11 question 12 question 13 and including the questions uh, below so you can actually understand how to answer question 14 15 16 and then also how to go about uh, solving of trigonometric equations and then learn everything you need to learn about trigonometry so just use the link in the description to basically get to access all these solutions and you'll be able to learn how to sketch how to answer different questions actually there are even other questions from one all the way up to seven